Um, so, we, you know, we talked about all this cool stuff that we can do with the tooling, and we talked about all this interoperability, authoring, debugging, and so forth, but it really brings up the question. If you can only author, you know, only debug and work with the code that you wrote, um, that's kind of a limited world. So let's really talk about how do we bring the best of the environment that Java developers have, which would be everything like java.lang and java.util, all the common collections, all this great stuff, you don't have over in JavaScript, so we want to basically enable that. And then we want to take other things that, that are great in Java script and make them available on the Java side so a Java programmer can program with them well. And for instance, a, a, a modern library like jQuery, which is great for building dynamic web pages, good effects, good animations, and so forth, something uh, JavaScript uh, developers really like. So let's talk about that first, and then we can tie it back together with the uh, tool again. So if you took Java Lang and Java Util, and we were able to uh, do Java to JS, it should stand to reason that with a little bit of work, we'd be able to take a majority of the Java uh, collections and, and Java Lang and bring it over to uh, uh, JavaScript. And the answer is, of course, we went and did that. Now, can you directly just translate all, all, all of that Java code by itself? No, you got to do a little bit of handwork in there, and we've already done that for you. But for instance, a lot of the concepts we haven't extended over there. There aren't threading concepts over in JavaScript. It's inherently single-threaded execution model. The security model, that's, that's you know, systemic in terms of everything you do in Java doesn't really exist over in the, in the uh, JavaScript world. So a lot of those, those, those level of concepts uh, we didn't uh, translate over. But however, in terms of the structure, in terms of the types, the interfaces, the general functionality, utility, and everything, we did uh, uh, modify our translation, and, and this is something we did for you. And then now, as a pure uh, VGO, pure JavaScript programmer, you have access to all those Java lang types, all those uh, Java uh, util types. Those are great. Those are cool. And, and that is part of what makes the Java uh, developers uh, uh, very productive, is now available to you purely over in, in, in VGO. Um, on the other side of the equation, we mentioned something like jQuery, and that's not written by some JDK developer. That's not written by us. It's really third party now. Right? It's not part of anybody's runtime. This is somebody else's hard work. Now, what we did is we said we want to have a seamless way for integrating in with these third-party JavaScript libraries and make them available to the Java programmer guy. And we're like, okay, how do we do that? Um, we don't own jQuery. We don't want to own every version of it. We don't want to have to crack the jQuery code open to insert our annotations or change its structure to look what we did. Um, so how do you make that happen? Well, it turns out that if you have a way to describe types, why not describe a type for somebody else's code? Leave the code intact, but describe a type using VGO that says, hey, this thing looks like a class. This thing has these kinds of members. It has this kind of nested structure in it. It has this kind of object literals that it passes around. That turns out very doable. You can take VJO then and using definitions in VJO, describe jQuery, and that's what we did actually in a single type. We described what jQuery is, no implementations, just describing the signature, describing its members, describing its structure. And you can give that to the VJet system and it can generate the Java code to make the jQuery code accessible to you in Java. Why? Because we did all this other homework with all the translatability, interoperability. That's all working for us now. And now we can go from one external type definition, a third-party library like jQuery, and make it completely available to you over in the Java side. Now, as a JavaScript developer, you've picked up an enormous amount of wealth and, and great uh, tools, utilities, programming classes. And then on the other side of the fence, too, if you're doing server-side development and you're building your web pages and stuff, you certainly want access to cool uh, scripting uh, technology like jQuery, and we've given you that, and we've tied it all together with a tool, and uh, the tool that lets you author and debug and run. But there's still one thing that's kind of missing, and, and we're going to follow up on that in a minute.